This is the entrance to the museum, and what I have done here on either side of the corridor, I have the earliest settlers of this town we call Derry. Over on this side, we have the European settlers, and they were the Scotch-Irish who came from Ireland in 1718 because of the persecution by the native Irish, by the British, and they came over here trying to find economic freedom, religious freedom, and cultural freedom. They wanted to be Scots. And so they came over here, and in fact, this was the first colony by the Scotch-Irish in America. The leader, James McGregor, uh, who was their pastor in the little town called Agadawi, where I'll be going to in March, uh, he's called in the Encyclopedia of Irish History the Moses of the Scotch-Irish in America. And he brought with it, of course, the first potato that was planted over by where the Fairways Apartments are today. And that was the first potato in, in the British Americas. Another dairyman also brought the first tomato into this country. So um, here we have things which stand for our early history, the meeting houses, the mills. Uh, this cane was made from the first house built in Derry. Really? That which was where? Um, over on uh, Lane Road. Okay. And it was torn down in 1863, but they realized that they were tearing down history. So I have a number of pieces that were made from that house. political clout to save history, uh, preserve history more or less in this area? I hope so. Over certainly my lifetime, I have seen some of our greatest buildings just bulldozed down. Yeah. And that's by private or commercial interests. Um, sometimes the town, sometimes our schools, right. you know, destroy some of our history. Uh, what are preserved buildings now, historic buildings? Uh, well, we have the Adams Building itself right here. Okay. Uh, we have First Parish Church, which goes back to 1769. Oh, uh, well, then we start to say, yeah, yeah. all right, we, and we have the store up there on East Derry Hill okay. that goes back to um, probably the 1840s. Okay. Uh, we have the Matthew Thornton House. You know, in the lower village, we have uh, the old academy building, the so-called alumni building at Pinkerton Academy, mm. and that wonderful Richardsonian building at Pinkerton Academy, the, the, the Pinkerton building that was built in 1885. So if we look around the town, we still have a number of these wonderful remnants of our, of our history. But I'm afraid it would be very easy for this generation to be the last one to see a number of those buildings. We have a display of the Native Americans, albeit Indians or Peoples of the Dawn, whatever name you want to give to them. And I'm not sure that there is one universal name right now. But when Derry was settled, we only had one Indian living in town. Um, before that, if you had gone back, let's say, to the 1500s, we would have had large active colonies of Indians at Beaver Lake or Island Pond and so forth. And uh, so you can still find a few Indian artifacts in town. And so we have a display here of artifacts that would have come from this area. Right. And over to the other side, we have Indian artifacts from different Indian cultures. You know, the Native Americans were not just living in wickiups, hunting buffalo. You know, there were Indians who built seven-story buildings. Out of, out, of, um, out of stone. 
There were those who had reading and writing and record keeping, all the things which make for more or less a modern civilization. And then we have the more primitive Indians. So I tried to show the different aspects of what the Native Americans were in the New World. And one of the things that a lot of people miss because it's just a little bit above their eyesight is the canoe that's hanging from the ceiling. Now that was found about 14 years ago at the bottom of Beaver Lake. The uh, Cody brothers had lost their sails and Ernest went out and borrowed a couple scuba diving outfits and they were walking on the bottom of the lake because it was completely dark down there and with their hands they felt this canoe and walked it to shore and it took about a year to dry out because they used wet compresses to slowly dry it out because if you let it dry out quickly it would just turn to powder and um, eventually the uh, Cody brothers uh, donated it to us and um, you know, I, I'm really grateful for Ernest and Roger for, for doing that because here is one of the true Indian artifacts that was here before we were. It's probably not too seaworthy right now though. <laughs>